William Shakespeare <laughs> said, better three hours too soon than a minute too late. I you like that one. <laughs> Do you feel that Anthony should have said those words that he was robbed? I yeah. said it. If you go back and listen to the fight, forget all that lying about, I said lies in the camera. William Shakespeare said, better three hours too soon than a minute too late. Are you like that one? <laughs> All right. Is that you then, yeah? And, and, Benjamin, and Benjamin Franklin said, time is money. So let's go. Let's go. Let's <laughs> go, I saw the girls in the background all doing, you know when you do that? You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ready for you, a little bit like. <laughs> Are we ready? May I, just, may I just say, both of you look ravishing this evening. Oh, bless you. Thank you. Guys, it's Katie and Sharon once again at Boxing and Bands, and I am super excited to welcome manager and trainer to Anthony Yard, Tunde Ejayi. You see the shadow boxing? <laughs> We see it, we see it. We see you. We see you. <laughs> How you doing? We are good. How are you? Good. Yeah, good. Everybody looks calm and uh, serene. I see that, yeah. Looking nice, man. It's so good to see nice interviewee us, <laughs> new interviewers for a change. You know, you just got some dry old man. Oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> what the thing? <laughs> oh, you started already. Dead, we haven't even asked me some yet. dead questions. I'm like, well, let's start anyway. But yeah, let's go. Good. I'm all good. So, Tunde, talk to me about your history in boxing because you know I know that you've got a long history in boxing. I think you've been in boxing something like twenty years or so in different mm -hmm. respects. Um, yes. Tell our, our audience a little bit about what what roles you've held in boxing and, and how you've moved around in the industry? Well, I mean, it started a very, very long time ago. You're right, about 20 years ago. You know, um, I was always known as a bit of a fighter. I don't know, I don't know why, because I didn't have no fight. I think I just looked at my man, a man was shook. <laughs> sorry, sorry for the language. <laughs> oh, but but it's funny, like I walked into a um uh kind of like an unlicensed gym called The Champions um, in about 1997 uh -huh. in Walthamstow. And, uh, you know, there was a boxing ring there. There was a guy called Alan Mortlake and he used to do unlicensed fighting, but I didn't really know about boxing. I just walked in there because it was near um, a house my dad just moved into mm -hmm. down the road in Tottenham Hill. Yeah. And I'd always been physical. I played football, you know, all my life and and then uh, they put me in a ring. I see the man boxing there. They just put me in a ring. Bam. Went in there. Straight. KO. So, so and that boy was the top boy at the gym. So, the guy, Alan Mortlock, he's like, yeah, AJ. Because they always called me AJ at the time. You know, them cut me, man. Like, AJ, AJ, <laughs> AJ. AJ. So, they made me have an unlicensed fight. So, because I was quite known in my area. Because I used to have raves. I used to put on dances. Um, cause I've always been kind of an entrepreneur and a, a speaker. I've always been a talker. I can, I can sell sand to an Arab. <laughs> I'm just, bro, I've got the gift. So, no, but anyway, no, so, no. so, so, so he, he said, yeah, you know, I should try unlicensed boxing. So there was, um, a show at the Epping Forest Country Club. And I'm telling you, I had the whole of South London in this venue. This is my first ever boxing match. I didn't know nothing about boxing because I was just a fighter on the road just used to punching people and, and, and getting results. So <laughs> so, so I had a fight, unlicensed fight, Epping Forest Country Club, bam, first round KO. Then they called me the dentist because I, no I knocked out the guy's teeth. A guy called Peter De Freitas was there. Peter De Freitas was training Nigel Ben at the time and he said, turn professional. And I was like, well, ain't you supposed to do amateurs before professional? <laughs> like, you know, like that's the first thing. Like, yeah. I'm, like I'm thinking this boxing thing because I don't know nothing about boxing at this time. I just know that I like fighting. So I had five amateur fights, and then I'm like, you know, my age. People were saying you should turn pro. I just turned pro. <laughs> like Ruggo, like two unlicensed, five amateurs, straight professional. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah. again, because I was a ticket seller, because I used to jam out dances 
Um, Elephant of Castle, remember it like it was yesterday. You know, first round, came out with a crew, first round knockout, and I was away. Five professional fights, but then I got an injury. But at this time, I'll tell you a little thing. Spencer Freeman was really big in the area. Spencer Freeman was a man, you know, him and Danny Williams were the two, the two guys in the area that was representing boxing. So I was like, everyone was like, how's this 20 just come in this thing? And people are talking about him already. Um, so yeah, so had the five fights, got an injury, decided to train. So I was training a, a, a young man called um, uh, Junior McDonald. He, was, he actually was a, um, a computer engineer for Hewitt Packard. So he really didn't have no amateur experience, but he loved boxing. Anyway, so I trained him. I'm training him. Boom. Next thing, won the Londons, won the Divs, finds himself in the final with Tony Bellew. So I've trained somebody. I've trained someone from nothing mm -hmm. to an ABA final, a, a feat which trainers, there's, tra there's trainers who's 60 years old that you train no one to the ABA final. Yeah. So I'd done that. Obviously, Junior lost in the ABA final against Tony Bellew. And then another uh, uh, young man, Akash Bhatia, I'd done the same thing. Anyway, Spencer Fearon. So I trained Spencer Fearon. I remember picking him up every morning. Same enthusiasm, same passion. Picking him up. Anyway, he had a Southern Area title fight against Dave Walker, another well-known name. Um, and it got the fight of the year. And, uh, you know, there was a lack of... Google that fight. It was a serious fight. Definitely. When Spencer licked him down... Sorry. When Spencer knocked him down. <laughs> <laughs> when Spencer knocked him down, the look on Spencer's face, he couldn't believe it. He's like, bro, <laughs> man's working juju or something. Because, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> bro, Spencer didn't know where, where this power come from. So Spencer knocked him down. He knocked Spencer down. Spencer knocked him back down. It was an uh, up and down affair. Yeah. Um... And really, Spencer Fearon is the one who gave me, who had the faith in me, you know, because I was no one um, in this sport of boxing. I'd be forever mm. grateful to Spencer. And it's just been a wonderful, wonderful ride thus far. You know, the madman who's not supposed to know nothing about boxing, you know, helped someone get a, the first ever global deal with Adidas. Um, it was actually ourselves that brought Adidas back into boxing. You know, uh, Anthony Yard was the first ever boxer who had a global deal with Adidas. Yeah. And we orchestrated that. Yeah. You know, we, we orchestrated that. Um, so you touched on your channel, The Fight Is Right. Just want to go back to that. Both you and Spencer Ferron interviewed um, Mark Breland. It was a yes. dope interview, by the way. Oh my gosh, yeah. me and Chan was fully locked in. We watch you locked though, anyway. Um, yes. But that particular one, we was literally, we didn't even get up off the seat. But just, just tell us, what is it about the show that makes people feel, well, guests feel so comfortable to open up to you guys on your show? Well, it's authentic. It's, yeah. it's authentic, it's real. You hear how we talk. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's really? like certain man, certain man and you hear the way I'm talking. And don't, I always tell people, don't be fooled. You don't negotiate deals with Foot Asylum, Adidas, and, and many other companies and work with top lawyers and businessmen and Frank Warren, um, if you're silly. <laughs> I'm not stupid. I just, mm -hmm. I just like having fun. That's it. I just talk the talk. And Spencer is the same. And that is the thing. Me and Spencer literally have been the same since we were young. We yeah, still are young, yeah. but younger. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? <laughs> and 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 we we just relay that on screen. So people they come on from work, they switch on, they're not uptight, they're not looking listening to a, a, a Cambridge graduate or Oxford graduate read out a script. You see what I'm saying? With us, but what sorry, bro, see, I get too excited. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Yeah, this is what I'm trying to say. Like, it just comes out. Yeah. And that, and that is what has made us, yeah. myself, Spencer, and Anthony, a selling point. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's a business at the end of the day. But we ain't really trying to, we're not reading from a script. Yeah. And um, Mark Breedham, you know, again, Spencer didn't tell me that legally he he was told by his lawyer not to say certain things. But Spencer being Spencer didn't tell me that. 
Oh, and I'm like, right. Hey, so you didn't even know. Were, I didn't even know what was going on. The bit, I'm just being myself, asking him certain questions. You yeah, yeah. that's what I'm saying. And again, nobody got that interview. I don't even think Mark Breland has given an interview since. No. no. You know, I, I heard that he joined the Charlos team. I don't know how much involvement he's got in that. But the reason why he opened up to us, because it was transparent. He could feel the energy. So, Tunde, you touched on stamina for sale. Um, yes. What exactly is stamina for sale? Because I know I know it covers a whole lot of things and you've got your merchandise and, you know, what? T- tell us about stamina for sale. And you know the things that, you know the things that spin the thing that you just see? Like, like the that. water, the stamina for sale water. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but you know something? Uh, again, again, you know, you got to shoot for this for the stars, you know, and with me, let's get it right. Boxing is my main, that's me. But I am boxing. I live boxing. I eat boxing. I breathe boxing. But, you know, I am, an, I've always had an entrepreneurial mind. Mm-hmm. And so, but you have to be focused. And I think that stamina, for, I've got so many staminas. <laughs> I've got stamina water, stamina for hair, stamina for wealth, Stamina for health, stamina trainer. I've built all these brands, offshoots of stamina for sale. Not because they're up and running now, but that is my intention. And so life is about having the intention. So I built these brands already. They're ready to go. But the success has to start from boxing. Yeah, no, definitely. Um so there's been a lot of criticism following Anthony Yard's losses, these yes. two losses, I should say. Um, you know, people are saying that they don't think that you're experienced enough as a trainer. What do you say to these people? And how do you keep mentally strong with all that backlash? Well, firstly, the mentally strong part, I'll, I'll touch on that. It's my father. This man came. And you know, you got to remember where, where we come from. Most, most of my guys... 95%, probably even higher than that, were all brought up by their mothers. Mm. I was the only boy in the estate that grew up with his father. My father come from the village, qualified as a chartered accountant. Um, CEMA qualified, if you know about accountancy. Yeah, I know about finance, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, C, the CEMA papers, not, papers ain't no joke. Yeah. And ACCA qualified. So my dad qualified with both bodies coming from a village, very determined. And I always remember a story he said to me that, son, it doesn't matter what anyone said to me, I was just determined to succeed. And uh, so that's in me. So I'm, I'm built, for, built for quote unquote criticism. So the criticism actually fuels me. It fuels me, but now I don't look at it as criticism. I just look at it as um, balance, you know, up, down, left, right, positive, negative. There has to be an opposite side. So the key is whether you focus on that. Nobody never gave me nothing. Nobody yeah. never gave me nothing. Mm-hmm. That's where the hatred comes from. Because you can't claim me. You can't say I, I came from some body or something. I meticulously sat down and collated a 10,000 page dossier of boxing combinations on myself alone Mm -hmm. and with that I've trained champions so I haven't done it the conventional way yeah I've done it my own way own way yes I've done it my own way and that's where you may have some people on the outside and you know listen boxing gains new fans new followers every single day there's a lot of people that don't know my history a lot of people don't know that I was in the corner and in the camp with Derek Chisora when he fought Vitaly Klitschko. A lot of people don't know that. Go, go and watch Vitaly Klitschko v Derek Chisora all them years ago. I've seen you it. See, I've seen, seen it. See it. Yeah. You see when Derek slapped the brother in the face. I ran. I ran. <laughs> cool. So just to piggyback off my initial question, do you think being vocal as a trainer has worked in your favour? Yes, but everything has its time. So it's definitely worked in my favor because 
the eyes are on me now. People will be more intrigued by my silence. It worked in my favor. It helped me negotiate. It worked in Anthony's favor. It helped me negotiate. But the difference between how it started, you know, taking Anthony to Frank's office, you know, getting the deal, then me and Anthony literally jumping, jump. Listen, the way, I don't know. You remember that scene from Rocky Free when they're on the beach yeah. and they're running? Yeah. And then they, they, they hug each other. Yeah. That was, that was me and Anthony. <laughs> we couldn't believe it. Frank, Warren, Frank Warren was giving us three thousand pounds we're like what are you nuts <laughs> three thousand pounds to punch a man in the face come on man bro. me and Anthony, we drove from Hertfordshire we were so grateful and so happy oh. you understand and now you've got these youths you're 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 telling them you can get deal and they want to bring in this lawyer that lawyer. I'm like, bro, what the what the f have you done yeah we ain't done nothing you you got this whole thing wrong you, you understand what I'm saying? You, you're thinking that you're looking at the, the money before the success. I just told you, me and Anthony were so happy with £3,000 because yeah. we couldn't believe it. Yeah. You know, Anthony never had no amateur career. He, never, he wasn't an ABA champion or nothing like that. So, again, very enough, very, very, not very enough the question, but it definitely has worked or had worked in our favour. Okay. So, look, um, James Cook, former boxer, um, now yes. part of the camp. How, yes. how is he fitting into the camp? Um, obviously, I know he's well respected. What does he bring to the camp and, and how is he slotting in with you guys? Main thing is experience. Mm -hmm. That's what James brings. Main thing is experience. And as you say, he's well respected. Um, I've known the family for years. They were like, they're like, the, they're like a very well known family in my area. The Cooks, you know, I grew up. With his, with his other brother. He's got a few brothers, James. Uh, so I grew up with Brian. But the thing is, is it's good energy. Mm. It's good energy. And, and James, not only being a, a British Commonwealth European super middleweight champion, um, he, he's got a serious sense of humour. You know, like an old Jamaican man. He just, yeah. brother, he just gives me so much joke. And as I say, I've never had nobody that I can really talk to and advise me in this yeah. thing. And secondly, I've, Anthony is a person, I felt if, you know, Anthony's a, he's like me, he's like, he deals with energy, positive energy. And sometimes it's not about just getting someone to do a job, it's whether you feel comfortable with them. And, mm -hmm. and Anthony's been there for me through tough times. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the thing is, is that we all know the, the year Anthony had, 2020. Yeah, and the family what we built, you know, Coach Ade and others, Bilal Ali, we were all there for Anthony. It's mm -hmm. it's it's been a tough time, and we all got through together as a family. So if we didn't have that relationship, it could have been a lot more difficult for Anthony. And he's come out on the other side, yeah. and he's ready to go. He's buzzing. He's back smiling again. And having James Cook with us, when we went to the press conference the other day, I literally just stood there, looking at the two of them laughing, and the way my heart. If, it, if there was an x-ray that could look at my heart, I felt so happy oh. to see Anthony laughing with someone. Because usually me and him just cracking joke. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Or him uh, uh, and Ade, but Ade's with us. But to see him having someone, you know, who's older than me, more experienced than me, has seen more than me, him just having that, you know, that time and watching the two of them, you know, and having James in the gym and having that, that, you know, second pair of eyes, it's just great. It's great for me. And I, I can only see it as a positive thing for Anthony and I can only see it benefiting Anthony moving forward. Yeah. Talking of positive, we're going to see Yard back in the ring on the 10th of July against Emin Artra. So how is training going? And have you seen major improvements oh, man. from his last I, fight? Just having James in it. And going back to the last fight, even though I don't want to go back, we never lost. I'm just telling you straight. I'm a, I'm a, I don't know. To me, yeah, to me, that was the team at 20%. Mm -hmm. So, and Anthony at 10% because of what he was dealing with. The first thing James Cook said when he joined the team was, the first thing I'm going to do, Anthony, is congratulate you for even being in that ring that night. Because what you have to remember is 
we fought Dex Spellman. We were the first people ever to stop Dex Spellman. Yeah. We got back in the gym on the Wednesday. And on the Thursday, another parcel in his family. Yeah. So he's just getting over the other bereavements. And then another one happened. So really, and he said it. It's not me. I'm not making nothing. He said it. He was literally on remote control. Can I just ask, though, on a serious note, do you feel that Anthony should have said those words that he was robbed from the fight? Well, boxing is a very emotional sport. It is. It is. If you was a boxer, if you was a boxer, mm -hmm. you know how you feel after a bad spot. Yeah. You will cuss yeah. everybody. You will cuss everybody. Cussing but everyone. The, <laughs> but the thing is, is that boxing, just as with life, is perspective. Mm -hmm. Now, I knew because of my experience that I needed to assert himself more in yeah. the fight and put it beyond doubt. I yeah. said it. If you go back and listen to the fight, forget all that lying about I said lions in a camp. You hear Ant say lions in a camp. And then you hear Ade say all day. I was very focused. But I keep saying, this is not denial of lions in a camp. Lions in a camp is what we live by. That's what motivates us. Do people actually think we're going to stop saying lies in the camp because people want us to stop saying lies in the camp? No, we're not. We're going to keep saying it. And I wish I did say it because I'm built for whatever they throw at me. The result's the result. We just got to move on. Focus on, July, focus on July the 10th, which is Emin Atra. Um, and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So am I. So finally, finally um, when do you think we'll get to see um the Arthur rematch it's next it's next. next it's next that's why when everyone's too when they're talking about oh there ain't no rematch I'm just like ah oh, cool <laughs> this is what I'm trying to say that's why I like being silent because it's like Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury mm. people were trying to negotiate this that but there's a contract it's in black and white remember we didn't need to give Arthur that shot we world ranked, you know, we, 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 we're fighters. We took the fight, you know, because we were very confident that we can beat him and that we can still beat him. But you got to have a rematch clause. <laughs> you have to, it's, it's, it's part of the game. It's part of the game. So whether you like it or you don't like it, it has to happen because we're contracted to have a rematch. And so first things first, let's get, this fight out of the way, which is our main focus. And then after that, hopefully we'll, you know, Frank said it, not me. Um, you know, we can have the fight in autumn. But yeah, thank you for it. Thank you it's for been it. amazing. It's been a pleasure. I can talk to you all day. Believe you know. me, but, but you know, you know, people, they say that human beings have the attention span of a goldfish. <laughs> and if you don't know that, Google it, because that's the facts. It's nine seconds people can concentrate for. So although we can talk for 10 hours, nonstop, yeah. You've got to chop it up a little bit and just give people... I, I don't know what it is. I just can't give short answers. I never I always go down another road. <laughs> yeah, you go, yeah you're, going, you're going back down left again. Like <laughs> <Yeah>. Tunde. <laughs> I'm back. Let's, let's bring it back. <laughs> Come on, let, let's rein you back. It's been yeah. amazing. It's been super dope. Yes. Tell the people where they can find you on social media and big up all your sponsors if you have any. Yes. Well, sponsors first. Foot Asylum. Um, Adidas, you got to big up the, the the main guys. Um, social media: Tunde Ajayi. Nine is my Instagram, the number nine. Nine is a logo because it took me nine years to develop my system of boxing. We've written nine years, so nine means a lot to me. And on Twitter, it's Tunde Ajayi nine 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 because I am the police. <laughs> I love that. I love it. I, so, yeah, and then obviously same Facebook, Tunde Jay. But yeah, that's how it goes, guys. We are uh -huh. KD and Sham at Boxing Advance, and of course, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe.